Did you hear what happened to our correspondent today? Yes. Did you see the video? No. <laughs> Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Johnny Cake Jones and I'm your host Frida Jack. Here at the Good News Network, we highlight the good news we find in God's Word. Today's good news is found in John 10, 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and a good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Good news. Jesus is our good shepherd. I don't know about you, Frida, but I don't know anything about sheep. So I am curious. How is it good news that Jesus is our shepherd? Well, thankfully we have our correspondent out in the fields earlier today finding out a bit more about these furry creatures. Hello, can you hear me? Tell us where you are and what you find out about sheep that might help us understand this good news about Jesus a bit more. Yes, I'm here at 13 miles on the Philip Golson Highway where we met with Mr. Velasquez and he gave his first hand experience on what it takes to take care of sheep. So, Mr. Velasquez, how long have you been a farmer? Hmm, about 34 years. About 34 years. And what made you want to be a farmer? Well, I love the animals. I love to raise them. It's a therapy to my full relaxation, my mind. I love to see them born. I love to see them grow. I love to see them graze. I always tell people, even on the pulpit, I raise sheep. I'm not a shepherd. A shepherd sleep with the sheep. If you could remember in Genesis when Jacob was explaining to his father and Laban, he said, in the cold, I was with your sheep. In the heat, I was with your sheep and I took none. A shepherd sleep with the sheep. It smells like the sheep. So I noticed that you had a horse that was herding your sheep. Yeah, well, the, the, the horse practically is like a, a protection for them. You know, and it, when there's a stray dog, it chases them away. When I go on the slaughter one, it circles around and around, want to know what's going on with the sheep. He, that horse really look after the sheep. So it's like their shepherd. Yes, they shepherd them, they protect them, because sheep are docile. And <coughs> In my experience in raising sheep, I could see the parallel. They are so closely in behavior. In other words, when I feed my sheep, not all of them come and eat. They, 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 they come together, but not all come and eat. And it's like when we go to, the, to, the, to church, to fellowship, not all of the people who attend get the word. We feed them with the, the, with the word, but they don't grow. If, that, if those sheep didn't have the horse, they would be very wild. And, and it, it, it's, we need, we, it, you know, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, because he could feel the intimacy. He knew the intimacy that God provides for him, protects him, deliver him. And it's the same thing with, with the sheep. I, when they are out there, like one of the one that I recently delivered, they need a shepherd. The sheep tried to have a young one, I couldn't birth it. I had to deliver it. Like the Lord says, knows the voice of the shepherd. They know it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Our oh, great shepherd and our oh, great sacrificial lamb, the Lord. You see how he pays so many twofold things for us? Well, that's how I have to do for my sheep. Look after them, protect them. That's, it's, a, it's a pretty great and perfect relationship with, with the Lord and the sheep. So the Lord said, we are sheep, I'm glad, because we need a shepherd.
Well, there you have it, guys. Today we learned how sheep are very similar to us. Just like them, we need a shepherd. And our shepherd is Jesus Christ. I'm Nadisha Robinson for GNN News. Thank you for that. Now, let's learn today's scripture verse. Hello, boys and girls. Did you know that a good shepherd takes care of his sheep? Yes, and the Bible tells us that Jesus is our good shepherd and that he takes care of us. So, in today's Good News Scripture verse, it reminds us about this. The Bible verse is found in John 10, 11, and it says, and you guys can do it along with me. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd takes care of the sheep. Good job, guys. Wonderful. Let's do it one more time. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd takes care of the sheep. Hmm. Let's meditate a bit on this verse. Hmm. How can we listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd? In what ways can we follow him? Hmm. Let's think about this. Here at the Good News Network, we think it's important for you to not only know the good news, but to understand it simply enough to share with others. So follow along and learn the first part of our Good News Gospel Hand Motion. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but man sinned and broke our relationship with God. Do those first words sound familiar? Those are the very first words of the Bible. It tells us how God made everything and he made it good. But man sinned and broke our relationship with God. That doesn't sound like good news at all, and it's not. But for us to know how good the good news is, it's important that we know how bad the bad things are. Adam and Eve were the first to mess up and sin, but we do a pretty good job in following in their broken ways. Now we have a broken world and a broken relationship with God. But do not despair. Next time we get to the good part of our good news gospel hand motion. Now let's head on over to our green screen historian to help us understand a little more about what being a shepherd meant back in Bible days. Hello there, my name is Amri, and I'm your green screen historian. With the press of this button, we'll travel back in time together to see places and meet people who might better help us understand the scripture back when it was being said. Today's good news is about Jesus being a good shepherd. Now let's see where we go to today to learn more about shepherd and sheep back in Bible times. Whoa! Well, according to my space-time continuum app, we're in Israel about a thousand years before Christ. But this place seemed kind of dry and dusty. Not the hills of rolling grass I would expect to find a shepherd leading his sheep. But wait, I see someone coming. He doesn't look like a shepherd though, more like a king. Hello, stranger. You do not look like you're from around here. Do you need help finding your way? Well, actually, I was hoping to learn more about sheep and shepherds. Oh, well then, let me help you with this. I'm a bit of an expert in these things. My name is David, King of Israel. King? Your Majesty. And you're an expert on sheep? Hard to believe, is it? But yes, I spent my youth caring for my father's sheep. I spent many days alone walking these green pastures with God. 
Shepherds are looked down upon, not the kind of people others want to be around. <laughs> Maybe it's because they stink living with animals. But many important leaders of God people were shepherds. Abel, Abraham, Moses, myself. Wow, God can use anyone and do great things. But you said something about green pasture. This doesn't look like green pasture. If I were to take care of sheep, I would take them to a field full of tall grass. While I'm sure the sheep would like that, the land that is good enough to grow grass that well is safe for farming and the animals are kept far away so they don't eat the crops. But no, this is green pastures. But how is this desert green pasture? Well, it takes a good shepherd to know where to find it. But if you look closely between the mounds of dirt and rock, little tufts of grass grow from the dew that settles at night. It's not the flowing fields of grass, but just enough for each day. Then, the shepherd takes the sheep along to the next place where there is what they need for the next day. This is what a good shepherd does. Provides for his sheep exactly what they need. Food, safe still water to drink from, and discipline too. A shepherd has a staff with a crook to pull sheep out of trouble if they're stuck, but also a rod to discipline them and send them on the right path. A good shepherd also gives protection from wild animals and dangers. Did you know, when I was young, I actually killed a lion and a bear with my own hands protecting my father's flock of sheep? Whoa, that's amazing. And you know, I believe God is a shepherd to us. I actually wrote a song not long ago that talks about this. I remember the words, um, but cannot seem to remember the tune. But it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I always have everything I need. He gives me green pastures to lie down in. He leads me by calm pools of water. He restores my strength. He leads me on right paths to show that He is good. Even though I walk through a valley as dark as then, I will not fear for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. God is my shepherd. The same way I took care of my sheep, He takes care of me. But I also believe in my heart that someday, God will give His people a leader who will lead His people in the same way. Well, in about a thousand and thirty years from now, Jesus, your great, 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 well, you get the idea, grandson will tell his followers, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd, lay down his life for his sheep. Thinking about it, the first people to hear this good news were actually shepherds visited by angels. My great, great grandson? God will fulfill his promise to me. This is good news. This makes me want to sing. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. God used a lot of special shepherds to lead and guide his people. Jesus, as God, is the best good shepherd we all need. Now back to you in the museum. Praise and worship are our response to God for what he's done and who he is. Praise along with us as we remember this good news that Jesus is our good shepherd and you are cared for. This is With Every Step, made by Covenant Kids and Worship. Take me, you lead me to a place where there is freedom. What is broken, you restoring. What is hurting, you are healing. Jesus, my shepherd, I can trust in you forever. And when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you tell
boys and girls, my name is Albert. I would like you to meet Osni, Osni Torres. He's a missionary. Now you are probably asking, what is a missionary? A missionary is a person who tells the good news of Jesus. So Osni is a missionary, a Belizean missionary. And that means that Osni tells the good news of Jesus right here in Belize. He is a missionary to you and to me. And today, he wants you to hear the good news of Jesus through his story. It is this story that I would like to tell. It starts when he was very young. Osni was born and raised in this house that you see right here behind me. It's located on the outskir outskirts of Orange Walk Town near the San Antonio Road. It is a quiet and peaceful place close to People's Stadium and San Francisco Roman Catholic School. He grew up with his mom, dad, and three siblings. Altogether, they were a family of six dad worked hard in the sugarcane factory. And mom's work was to stay at home to take care of the family. Both mom and dad worked very, very hard. He had a pretty normal childhood. A weekday for Osney would kind of look like this. He'd wake up early, go to school, and come back home in the afternoon. Sounds like your day, right? Once at home, he would then take a little break and watch some cartoons. Ha! Huh, what's your favorite cartoon? Mine was Bugs Bunny. After cartoons, he would then start doing his homework or spend his time studying. What did I just hear? Uh, you, sh you don't like doing your homework? You should, you know. Anyway, for the Taurus family, discipline was super, super important. Discipline was shown in all parts of life, everywhere they went and everything they did and everything they said. He was never able to stay and play after school. He couldn't go on a sleepover. He wasn't permitted to bring a friend home very, very disciplined. He wouldn't dare think of bringing a negative report or a failing grade from school. And swearing was an absolute no. Talking back to his parents or teachers just didn't happen. Any such behavior would lead to an encounter with the whip. And that's not what Osney wanted. No way. Ow! And weekends were no exception to the rule of discipline either. On Saturday, 
Dad ensured that everyone did their part helping mom with the household chores. Hijos, a trabajar, to work, he would say. And on Sunday, everyone went to church morning and evening. No one could miss out. Papa, no me siento bien. I don't feel good. No importa. That doesn't matter. You are going. Let's go. Discipline was important to the Taurus household, but discipline did not mean that life could not be enjoyed. There was a special time that Osni did look forward to. It was the time that he spent at the place that he called home away from home, Chan Pine Ridge Village. He remembered his time with cousins and church family. Oh, how he loved Chan Pine Ridge Village and how he enjoyed the village life. He would run and run and run all over his grandparents' yard until the soles of his feet were black, black, black. He loved playing games with his cousins and village kids, hide and seek, catch, football, kick the ball, Sounds like so much fun. But sometimes the fun got him into trouble. Like on one occasion, as Osney enjoyed an intense game of hide and seek with other children, he decided to hide underneath a sugarcane trailer. He was small and he knew that if he crawled in behind the large wheels, he would never be seen. He hid himself and waited quietly. Then, when he saw the opportunity to run home, something happened. He did not notice a large screw that was right above his head. And bam, it got him right on the head. Ouch. And Osney could feel and see the blood gushing out. That was the first injury he remembered. Like a soldier wounded in battle, he took a whole bunch of stitches and was placed on mandatory rest for an entire month. Can you believe that? One whole month of rest. Spending time in Champagne Ridge was something that he looked forward to. Whether it was on the weekend or for the entire summer, he really looked forward to being there. He looked forward to the church annual Christmas program for kids, the Samaritan purse gift, and vacation Bible school. He really loved church stuff. There was something about church that really attracted him. Then one evening, at one of the church events, the pastor shared the gospel of Jesus. The good news. You see, the pastor was a missionary. He shared the gospel. He then made a special invitation to all those listening, an invitation to follow Jesus, to, to become a missionary for him. Osni heard the invitation and wanted to raise his hand and accept that invitation. But what would people around him say? Would they give him a weird look? Would they all stare? Boys and girls, have you ever felt like Osni? Has someone told you the good news, but you were afraid to accept? Stay tuned as we continue the story next time and hear how Osni responded. Wow, what an interesting story. I can't wait to find out more. Today's good news, Jesus is our good shepherd. This is good news because Jesus cares for each one of his sheep. He provides for us what we need, leads us and watches over us, protecting us from the enemy.
even going so far as to lay down his life for his sheep. John 10, 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. And we will learn more why he lays down his life for his sheep next time. If you believe this good news, we want to hear from you. Take a picture of yourself with a message about why Jesus is a good shepherd to you. Then upload it to Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag JesusMyGoodShepherd and hashtag BelizeChangingBeliz. Well, that's all we have time for today. I'm Frida. And I'm Johnny Cake Jones, hoping to see you next time at the Good News Network, where we, we bring, bring you more good news. news. Adios. Bye-bye. Till next time. Au revoir. Good day. Hasta la vista, baby. You take me.